Alright. Hey everybody, um, I'm back for the new year. Uh, I haven't put out a lot of videos at the end of last year. Yeah, things got pretty busy and hectic, so, uh, you know, apologies for that. But it's a new year. I have a lot planned for this year. A lot of pods, a lot of stuff that I'm going to be doing. Um, starting off, um, getting our plants started. So last year I had five varieties. I had the red and yellow ghost, uh, Carolina Reaper, Butch Tea, and some habaneros. That's all I had. This year I have a lot more. These are all my seeds that I saved. Uh, quick overview on my seeds. When I did reviews or just when I had a chance to get seeds last year, I would take them out of the pod. I'd let them sit out. I'd separate them from the uh, placenta that they were on. Let them dry for a day. After that, I would fold them up in a paper towel and I would seal that paper towel in a Ziploc bag. That's just how I store my seeds and uh, it seemed to work for my first year and that's what I'm doing again. Okay, um, a lot of people don't use these, uh, the peat pellets, the starter. I like to do it because it's convenient for me. A lot of people like to use the little orange cups or the little, um, you know, the little cups to start them in, or the red solo cups. Uh, I'll get there eventually, but I don't start them in that. I start them in my peat pellets. So I have a tray here, 25 pellets. I've got a whole bunch of seeds. I'm going to do a couple doubles so I can have a few, uh, um, you know, doubles of my plants going on. But anyway, for these peat pellets, they're easy to use. You you open it up, you get you read the directions. They'll say how much water you need per. Um, per peat pellet or how much you need for all of them. For this it's five and a quarter cups for 25 pellets. You make sure your water's warm. Don't make it too hot or boiling because that'll screw it up and kill your seeds. So basically you're just going to pour your water in here evenly. Like so. And these pellets go from small little discs like a hockey puck, tiny little hockey puck almost. Uh, let me let this soak up a little bit. I don't want the pellets falling out of their places. You'll see little bubbles start popping out. It doesn't take very long. They start soaking up the water real quick and they expand rapidly. So let's let them soak this water up. Um, while we're waiting for this, I'll go ahead and go over some of the pods I'm going to be growing this year. I've got the Carolina Reaper. Uh, yellow Brain Strain, Maruga Scorpion, Sunrise Scorpion, Chocolate Scorpion, White Boot, Jay's Peach Ghost, Peach Boot, Nagamora, Fatali, Bohemian Goat Pepper, White Habanero, Red Habanero, Bubblegum Seven Pot, Brown Dougla, Butch Tea, Yellow Boot, Yellow Brain Strain, Bubblegum Seven Pot, Maruga Scorpion, Jay's Peach, uh, White Habanero, Carolina Reaper. You might have heard some doubles. Those are the, the um, ones I'm going to grow more than one of. There goes the water. And I have two bags that weren't marked. They were from my first year. I don't know what they are. So they're going to be the mystery seeds. Uh, let me get the rest of this water in here. I gotta be real careful with this. let that water soak up. Um, I'll also be going over my, my light setup to start them indoors because it is a frigid winter we're having here. But um, it's a nice setup. I went the cheap route. I don't have anything crazy. I don't have any grow tents or anything like that. Eventually I might step into that, that realm of growing, but not right now. So let's just wait for these. And basically what I'm going to do, um, when you sow your seeds, you're going to want to do, if you're doing the peat pellets or regardless, um, I sow my seeds at a quarter of an inch, so I'm just going to use this big pen to uh, poke some holes in it. And what I did, I measured a quarter inch and I notched it with a knife, so I'll get exactly a quarter inch for every hole to sow the seeds. I'll probably do, uh, put three seeds per pellet, that way I can hopefully get all of them to germinate, and uh, we'll go from there. So I'm just waiting for this water to soak up, and I'm going to start off the list here. Start with Carolina Reaper, and I'll work my way over. 
you probably no, you can't see it. I got some other things to show you after I get all the seeds sewed here. I will uh, I'll show you guys some of the stuff I've been my projects from the end of last year. So yeah, all I'm doing. Well, you can pull back the material on the peat pellets. Actually, you know what? Let me zoom in so you guys can see a little bit better. That way you can actually see what I'm doing here. Here, let me put this one. All right. There. All right. Now you can watch me sow these seeds. It's not very hard. You can pull the um, you can pull the the material back a little bit if you need to. Uh, these are really wet. I don't know. I don't remember them being this wet from last year, but it's okay. It, it's gonna dry up. I have a very dry basement, and I keep it warm. The dehumidifier runs a lot down there, so I keep it real dry. So you're gonna go a quarter inch for each one. I might as well just start doing this. Poke all the holes, quarter inch. So I still have a lot of sauce that I'm using up. Um, I didn't get to make the videos that I really wanted to. I didn't feel confident to put a video out on something I didn't have the knowledge of. But now that I had my practice in, I feel that I can put some videos out this year for those things. Uh, you know, making jerky. I'll be doing a jerky video. I'm gonna do a, um, a ferment video which I still have some questions about the ferment so maybe any of the chili heads on here can uh, help me out with that because so I have two uh, large mason jars that I have ferments going on still from last year I'm gonna let it ferment for probably at least six, about six months I guess some people say you don't need to do it that long but that's what I'm doing mine as but uh, I did the exact same thing on two of my ferments but they turned out very differently and I'm thinking it's the type of peppers I used or I missed something in one of the peppers when I cut them open to process them I don't I don't know what happened but one of them looks kind of fouled and the other one looks like a healthy ferment so all right so we'll get these holes in here Some of them I don't need to rip open, some of them I do. I think last year I sowed my seeds January 23rd, I believe. So, uh, let me fix this. It's about the same time frame. But last year I almost killed my peppers several times, or my chili plants several times. We had a late frost and we had all kinds of craziness going on. They're going to stay inside longer this year, I think. We had like a, a rogue frost last year that almost did in the plants. Is this one upside down? Nope. It just needs ripped open. Alright. So, if anybody's wondering why I haven't been making a lot of videos. We've been doing a lot of preparation and a lot of stuff uh, my wife and I are expecting. She's about halfway through her pregnancy now. So, I mean, right about the time I stopped doing my videos is when we found out we've been you know, getting everything in order that we need to, so. But things have calmed down finally a little bit and it's seed season again. Uh, that dirt off. Okay, so I have all the holes done. All I'm going to do is take probably three or four seeds. Um, if you have sensitive skin, which if you have sensitive skin in your chili head, you probably shouldn't be doing this. I don't, I don't know, but uh, you can wear gloves when you're doing this if you need to, or just wash your hands really good afterwards. Uh, Dawn dish soap works great. It cuts through the oil like a champ, so that's a, 
a good one to use. Alright, so I got the Reaper done. Actually, I have a second Reaper I need to do down here in this node. Uh, the reason I don't have the same plants next to each other like this, I have one Reaper here and I'm going to have one down here. The doubles I put down here at the bottom because I didn't even count, I didn't count how many varieties I had before I started this, so the doubles are going to be separate from the other ones. One, two, three. I'm going to get one more because I really want to get 100% um, germination, which <laughs> that's reaching. I know, I know it's a reach to get 100% germination, but we will see. So, Reaper, done. Next, Yellow Brain Strain. Um, at this point, I think we had ran out of paper towels, so I used a coffee filter. It does the purpose just fine. So, uh, Yellow Brain Strain is also one I'm going to have multiple of. I don't have many seats here. Uh, this year, I didn't save a lot of seeds from last year, but this year, I plan on saving a lot of seeds, and hopefully, I can get some seeds out to you guys. Uh, maybe I'll do some kind of contest or something, you know. There's three in that one, and we'll get three in this one. Alright, so that's the uh, yellow brain string. Maruga Scorpion. Now, a lot of these seeds are from the pods I tested last year that people had sent me. So I really do appreciate that, guys. Um, I wouldn't have all these seeds if it weren't for you. But um, I do recommend ordering seeds off certain websites that you trust. Um, I had ordered seeds from last year and I am ordering some seeds for this year as well for some different varieties. So some of the some of the new the new uh, types of chilies they have out I want I want to get those grown as well. Uh, last year you saw I grew in those green pots. Um, I'm actually going to mix that with a compost over this summer I'm not going to use well, obviously I'm not going to use that soil this year I'm going to have brand new soil but I'm going to uh, mix that soil with some compost I'm just going to let it sit let it get a lot of good nutrients in it over the year and I'll use that soil again next year alright Maruga Scorpion done Sunrise Scorpion And I'll show you here, the, like the Sunrise Scorpion. This one I don't think I separated the seeds too well. But um, let me show you here. If you can see the darker seeds on the right and the lighter seeds on the left, I'm always going to use the lighter seeds to sow. Because if they're darker seeds, I don't know if they're good or not, but it might be. I just go with uh, the lighter colored seeds. So Sunrise Scorpion. Getting dropped in there. Nice scorpion also is going to be nope I only have one sunrise scorpion that's fine because I have maruga scorpion as well okay so that's the sunrise scorpion I might fast forward through this I might not I don't know it's gonna be a long video you know if you're interested in watching this part you can watch it or just fast forward it yourself I guess that way you don't get too bored watching this. All right, uh, chocolate scorpion. And they have one of these, so I'll go ahead and toss these in. There we go. That's done.
Um, I might have made a mistake here. Let me check something. I might have skipped over one on accident when I was grabbing the bags and writing them down. Chocolate scorpions here, but that didn't get used. Okay. Let's see what I did. Yellow seven pot. I totally missed that one. Okay. Yellow seven pot is going to be down here, so I'm going to switch that. This is yellow seven. Those mystery seeds are not going to be used this year, then. That's fine with me. Okay. So that's a yellow. And now I can put in the chocolate scorpions. tried to be careful with the seeds, but I wasn't careful enough, I guess. Alright, chocolate scorpion. Drop them in there. Yellow seven pot. Yellow seven pot was a really good pot. That was my first super hot that I tried. I don't know if everybody considers that a super hot or not, but that was the first one, and it had a great flavor. So this is. We'll cross this question mark off. It is a yellow seven pot. All right. Next, white boot. Like I said, I have all these varieties, but I'm only going to be having one or two plants of each variety. And that does not count my overwinters. My overwinters, I have a few of those, and another experiment that you'll be seeing here in a little bit. So, I've seen a really cool article online about it, and I decided to try it out. Hopefully it takes. Alright, white boots done. Next is Jay's Peach Ghost. Now, I plan, like I said, ordering more seeds this year. If anybody has any suggestions on a new variety that's stable, I'm willing to order some seeds. So do just let me know and I'll check it out. Uh, the one I was looking at was the brown, was it the brown dougalette? No, I don't know. A couple of guys ate it and it destroyed them. I have to check it out. It was one of the brown pods. Um, there's also a really cool one that uh, Ted Barris ate a few months ago, and it was all, wait Peach or Jay's Peach Ghost has to put this way yet. This is a really cool looking pod. It was like a long red pod, and it was pimpled out. That was another one that I was looking at. But uh, I haven't ordered the seeds yet. I'm going to be doing that very soon, probably within the next two weeks. They might be a little bit behind, but that's fine. It's not a big deal. Alright, so there's Jade's Peach. Peach Boot. I don't even know why I'm growing this pod this year, but I am. The Nagamorich. The taste and this pepper alone was enough to do me in. It was it was plenty hot, but it had that super strong perfume, whatever taste to it, and it was just crazy. Nagamorich. Oh yeah, don't touch your face when you're doing this. It's a bad idea. I did that last year. I had an itch, or I some I had eyelash in my eye or something. I went to <laughs> itch it. I had a bad couple of minutes there. 
My wife was laughing at me though. She thought it was hilarious. All right, this is the Fatali. Very good pepper. I want to make a uh, Caribbean style sauce. I'm going to be using a Fatali and probably the uh, yellow brain strain or the yellow seven pot. I think it was the yellow seven pot that had that real fruity flavor and it was real good. The yellow varieties are always pretty good. All right, get a couple of those in there with more. Boom. All right. Mm. I do have extra seeds in here, so if I don't get everyone to take, I'll have a couple retries. All right, Bohemian goat pepper. This was a pretty good pepper. It's kind of kind of like the um, the Caribbean, some of those Caribbean type peppers. Or chilies. Some people soak their seeds in water beforehand. Some people don't. I had a pretty good uh, germination rate doing this exact thing last year. So that's what I'm sticking to. I'm sticking to what I know. So it might not be the best, but it gets the job done, right? Oh shoot! I'm spilling seeds. center. There we go. Okay. Jeez. It's easier with the smaller sandwich baggies. I double fold the paper towel, but this is fine. White habanero. This is a unique pepper. If anybody knows another pepper like the white habanero, there's some mini jelly bean looking pots and for me when I ate these it was like eating fresh horseradish um, some people don't like that I love horseradish it's really good I eat it on a lot of stuff roast beef sandwiches it's really good but um, the white habanero the little jelly bean ones they have a very unique hit pungent flavor I like it if anybody knows another pod that's similar to that, let me know because I'd be interested in growing it. Boom. We're getting there. We're getting there. Red habanero. These, actually, I think the red habanero was the first review I did on my channel. It was the uh, those store-bought red habaneros, and they were huge, real big. So let's see if I can get some giant red habaneros grown this year. All right. Always double checking my chart just to make sure I don't want to get anything mixed up or anything like that. So, all right, red hab done. Oh, you know what? I need that white habanero again because I was doing two of those. Next is probably one of the more unique pods, chilies. Um, let's see here, white habanero. Get a couple of seeds in there. The bubblegum seven pots next, and that is a very unique chili. I love how it looks. I like how the color bleeds right into the stem. Very cool pod. There we go. Bubblegum. This is another one of the coffee filter ones, but it does the job. Alright. Alright, bubblegum seven. Right there. Seven, also right here. This is one of the ones I didn't get very many uh, seeds from. I only had 
five seeds, so I really hope these germinate. Crossing my fingers. Uh, that one's garbage. I'll put that off to the side. It's empty. Brown Dougla. I believe I had two different Brown Dougla sent to me. The first one, um, this happens to some pods. I've had them, my own happen to the, this way too, but uh, it was a dud. It didn't have, it had the, you could taste the chill, you could taste the oil in there, but you could not, um, there was no heat, very little heat. Alright, so I have one brown dupla. Butch T. Now, I gotta tell you, after uh, I stopped making some videos last year when I was working on my uh, ferments, I don't know if somebody else has experienced anything like this, but it was absolutely crazy when I was, uh, let me get these seeds out of here. It's still stuck to the placenta, it's funny. But I was cutting, I was having all my my chilies to make the ferment and when I was doing that thankfully I had gloves and all that good stuff on but um, some of the pods were filled with juice I don't know if it was juice oil I don't know I mean I had I was pouring out into my glove checking it out it was just wild it was not something that I thought the chilies would do I didn't think they would be filled with a uh, juice but they were I think I have a little bit of video footage floating around somewhere with that but we'll see if I can recreate that this year. <laughs> that would be pretty cool. All right, butch tea. Nope, I only have right. only one butch tea growing fresh this year. All right, there's the butch tea. Yellow boot. I'm not going to be super picky about these seeds. Um, yellow boot, so it's, it's a good pod. Doesn't have a super strong flavor to it or anything. Alright, and I'm only missing one, which is my question mark. Well, I had two. I guess I'll go, I think this one. Let me check it out. This is a mystery seed. It's always fun to have a mystery plant. That looks kind of red. Let me check this one out. That one's kind of red, and this one is. Also kind of red. Okay, so I'll just use some of these. Let me get some of the seeds out. It. It's a little time consuming to do this. I took my time, but uh, yeah, that's done. I'm gonna get these covered and then I got some cool stuff to show you guys. You don't want to push down real hard on the soil, just like kind of push it over on top of the seeds, make sure it's leveled, and uh, keep it a little bit loose for the seeds. You don't want to pack it down real tight or nothing. All right, get that going.
These pea pellets are a lot bigger than the ones I used last year too, I think. Well, no, they're not, I guess they're about the same size. There's different size pellets you can use. If you want bigger pellets to start them with, you can. Eighteen, so far I have eighteen varieties it looks like. So that's a good start. I'm probably going to keep it around twenty to twenty-five plants this year, not counting my overwinters. Alright, all the seeds are covered. Let me rinse my hands real quick. Actually, wash. <laughs> you might have oil, or well, you will have oil on your fingertips when you do this. So make sure you wash up real good. Alright, let me zoom out here. Seeds off to the side. Extras. Alright, I will start with this. Zoom out a little bit more. This is my Carolina Reaper vodka. Uh, you can tell it's got like an amber color to it. And it is wicked. I tried like a half a shot on New Year's. And nobody else would step up after they saw me do a shot because this stuff, it's got, all, well, not the full heat of a pod, but it's got all the heat that, you know, a reaper would, would have. And it's like, it's kind of amplified because it's in the alcohol. It's hard to explain. You got to try it with the burn of the alcohol. I don't really drink, you know, liquor that much, so I'm not used to that. But uh, it's good stuff. I'm going to let it sit for a long time and... We'll see how it goes. Um, how I made that, I just took these. These are my dried reapers that I have from last year. About a half a jar. It's a good amount. So um, I have that. And right here, it's one of my ferment jars. Um, I really wanted to make a video on this last year. I didn't get to because I wasn't confident in the uh, with the knowledge that you have to have to do this. So I wanted to do it last year and get this done. That way, this season, I will have enough knowledge to hopefully make a video. As you can see, it's got that's a white layer on top. Um, I'm told that's fine. As long as it's like a white color, it's not a big deal. But uh, down here, it's just got a little bubble, the air pockets in there. And uh, that's one of the... Uh, the ferments I have going on and then I have this um, airlock in the top space it's filled with vodka so if the jar needs to uh, purge some of the gas it pushes up it comes out of that center bubble and then that gas comes down under it and escapes through the top um, I made these two batches very close together that's the good batch this one I scraped the top off of and maybe somebody has a little bit of knowledge on it. I scraped the top, I think it was in the beginning of December at some time, but this one, you can see it's not that white, it's more of a, it's starting to get that layer on of, of, uh, of whatever that is on the top, 
well this one I'm not sure because I think it might be some type of mold because when it when I scraped it off it was like a grayish color and I pretty sure this is gonna be a foul batch I'm probably gonna have to throw it away I just wanted to scrape the top off I added some more uh, liquid solution to it and I wanted to see what would happen but most likely this is my foul batch and this is gonna be thrown away because when it comes to fermenting and anything like this food in general uh, better safe than sorry and I am not gonna be getting sick over a foul batch of fermented sauce so that's some of the things I got going on um, I'm gonna let these go probably till I don't know maybe July um, I might do a sauce video in July well with this one so that's that um, I'm gonna head downstairs to the grow room and uh, I'll meet you guys down there <sighs> alright guys we're downstairs um, I've got the uh, the pea pellets and all the uh, seeds in here now how I have this set up I've got my uh, my heating pad underneath I'm gonna keep that on low and I have three lights in here I have two of the lights I used last year and I have one big area light so uh, let me get this off of here and I'll show you how I have this set up I went with the cheap method of buying things this year so all right I just have these two plastic tables set up so I'm gonna have a lot of room eventually um, I have one light here one light over here those are the grow lights on each side and then I have this light up here um, I don't know the specs on this light I had a family member that had about a dozen of these so I took a couple of them and fixed them up but they're um they are curved lights inside there's uh, two light bulbs and they're u-shaped so it puts off a lot of light and it seems to be doing the trick on my overwinters which I'll show you here in a minute so anyway I'm gonna have these sitting here like this for a while uh, once they start sprouting and stuff like that I will move them up closer to the light but for right now it's not that big of a deal um, the way I have my lights set up here um, I had these two metal rods left over that's what I'm using to support the light and your basic cinder blocks. I've got two cinder blocks back there, there, here's my lights right there uh, more cinder blocks over there and they're like a buck a piece, well a buck twenty a piece about so it's very cheap to uh, be able to have these to set up your lights and I also bought some regular bricks the bricks were like forty cents a piece so I can use those to adjust height on either the lights or the plants whenever needed so I can keep them exactly the distance away from the light that I need them alright so that's that and over here I only have two lights I have the one uh, large uh, like a I don't even know what kind of lights they would consider those but like the ones you'd have hanging in your garage or something and then the one girl light and then I have four plants in here we'll start off with this one I believe this is the yellow yeah this is the yellow boot and as you can see I've only had them with lights on for about maybe a week week and a half now let me try to focus in on that and it's getting this growth already uh, it does look kind of yellow on the video it is, they are light this leaf was already there but um, it's getting a lot of little nodes all over it uh, back there is the butch tea and it's got a lot of little nodes coming off of it a lot of little leaves you know these I've been just sitting down here without light all winter and they did pretty much fine I didn't um, I didn't prune them down until I was ready for the lights I don't know if that was a mistake or not but that's what I did this is the Reaper it had this bunch of leaves here left over from last year I kept them on just to get it boosted on on it starting and it's only getting a couple of little sprouts coming out but those are the three overwinters and then right here is my project I'm making a banchi and I'm using my habanero so I got a little banchi kit you can see it's still in its peat pellet because I made that mistake last year I kept the peat pellet material on but um anyway this is one of the habaneros I had I took it out of the green container it was in um, I basically used heavy-duty shears and just sheared off 
what I needed to. I wasn't gentle about it. I wasn't, I, I wasn't expecting it to, um, you know, live or not. It was an experiment. And as you can see, um, I had right here, this branch was still on, but it completely dried up and shriveled the leaves on it. So I chopped it off. This figure, it's not doing the plant any good. But as you can see, it's got a bunch of little leaf buds coming out all over it so it's surviving and for a banchi plant I'm gonna keep it real short and it's hopefully gonna stay small and produce some chilies and be a little bonsai chili plant so we'll see how that goes if this is a success the next banchi plant I'm gonna make is probably gonna be the black pearl because that is a very cool looking plant and it would make a good banchi plant so that's my setup guys I mean like I said uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. I got 12 cinder blocks, so that's about $15. And those tables, I had them laying around, but if you buy them, I think they're about uh, $15 for a set. And they stack uh, three or four high. And I'm using two of them. And then uh, the lights and stuff. So everything I have here is it's all fairly cheap that I'm, I'm using. I'm not going for an expensive setup. So that's that I got my soil ready for um, when they're gonna be transplanted but I will keep you guys updated uh, it's probably gonna be a few weeks once I start getting germination and I get some plants sprouting in I will uh, I'll let you guys know